It is my absolute pleasure to introduce uh, World Federation Neurology Weavers uh, to Professor Netravati from Nimhans. Uh, Nimhans, uh, the, she will tell us about the institute, uh, is a fantastic uh, uh, the research facility in India, which is basically a lesson for many of us uh, all over the world. Uh, you can look at uh, one of my old interviews uh, with uh, Professor Satish Chandra on the history of Nim Hands, uh, which I strongly recommend. Uh, Netra, very good uh, evening to you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, you. Uh, you are an additional professor at Nim Hands. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about you so that our viewers can get to you, get to know you. Uh, good evening, Tissa. It's really a honor and a pleasure to be here as part of uh, WFN. Um, I am an additional professor of neurology at Nimans, Bangalore, that is India. So I am. I finished my residency in 2008, and then I've been working as a faculty for a while. For one and a half years, I worked in a private setup and then started at Nimans. So it's almost 17 years that I've been at Nimans. So Nimans is when after I finished my MBBS. I got into Nimans as a junior resident uh, person. So it was a completely a different world I was seeing from MBBS, uh, where I was uh, exposed to so many different type of neuropsychiatric patients, neuropsychiatric disorders, and the way everything was so immaculate, everything was so systematically covered. And that was one of the reasons that uh, I got into neurology at uh, Nimans. And I was, I think, uh, three of us from the same department tried to get into neurology. There was 3,000 plus people who had uh, put. And I think I was one of the lucky of them to get into Nimans at that point of time. Um, and after I got in, I realized whether I had made a big mistake because the smooth sailing stopped after I became a resident because there was so much of hard work. Every day was hard work. The sleep was very less, but eventually I started loving it. Started realizing it that hard work and being next to the patient is the only way that we are going to learn neurology at Nimhans. It's not just being always with books. That was one of the first thing which I realized at Nimhans, that patients teach us more than even a book what is going to teach us. So Nimhans has been something which has opened my eyes. It's like going from a small lake to an ocean. You realize how much different the world is, how much different everything, every perspective changes. So this is what I understood when I started in Nimans and with everything it has changed. And now when I've got into a specific disorders, I basically work on two conditions, neuroinfections and CNS demyelinating disorders. So luckily both of them are treatable disorders for me. So, I find it now very difficult to see other part of neurological disorders where I can tell them that there is no treatment after being with all these treatable neurological disorders. Or then I have a person where I'm not able to treat them almost fully. So my passion like this has increased and I've been able to be here. And uh, neuroinfections, as we all know, is very common in India. And we get exposed to many of the infections, but the most problematic is the, sometimes we do not have the, the best diagnostic setup. We do have many of the virology, and the bacteriological tests to do, but sometimes as we know that if, uh, if we are ignorant and our eyes do not see what our mind does not know. So we do not advise the correct test and then we may not be able to come to a correct diagnosis. It's been uh, every patient has taught me how I've missed out cases, but eventually learned from them and improvised. I still remember my first case of autoimmune encephalitis. I think this was in 2005 when it just came out about NMDR encephalitis. So this patient was diagnosed to have a psychiatric disorder and was uh, referred because we did not find anything on MRI, CSF, nothing. 
So we thought it was a psychiatric disorder and sent her to the psychiatry. And she did improve with ECG and went back home. But in 2015, after 10 years, she came back to me in the fourth episode of a relapse. And that was the time we diagnosed NMD or encephalitis in the same patient. And when she improved, she asked me, Madam, do you remember me? You had seen me when I was a child. So then I went back to the old records because till then the old records, we had not taken it out. And then I realized that from a psychiatric disorder, how much I had learned from this patient that now I could make a diagnosis of autoimmune encephalitis. And this is only because of the knowledge and having a better diagnostic uh, facility. So in this way, the knowledge has increased and demands has been a great learning experience for me each and every day. The students who are there, who learn sometimes more than us, as well as the patients teach us a lot. I think your case and the Nimhans is a nice segue to remind viewers uh, the, the beauty of uh, such an institute. Uh, Nimhans stands for National Institute of uh, Mental Health and Neurosciences. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And it's uh, located yeah, in beautiful yes. Bangalore. And uh, Many people don't uh, uh, the, the respect this, uh, that uh, mental health uh, is indeed uh, coming out of brain. Uh, when I see how people try to separate mental health uh, and brain problems, uh, I sometimes uh, wonder whether politicians and some policymakers nationally and internationally think that mental health come from your foot, uh, not from your head. I think uh, the Nimhans is, uh, is a beautiful example why uh, brain health, uh, mental health, uh, all these issues should be incorporated uh, via service delivery, research facilities, uh, education and training centers are uh, amalgamated together so that you can offer world-class care. And your very case that you've shown that it took 10 years uh, for it to be correctly diagnosed as autoimmune encephalitis is a, is a telling example of that. Uh, so let's encourage our viewers to study NIMHANS. Uh, you have a good website uh, and there are enough stories uh, in web uh, to learn about uh, how people build NIMHANS. Uh, if a particular viewer wanted to build such a center in their country, how to advocate with their political leaders and so on and so forth. You told us your other passion is uh, demyelinating disorders. Uh, you are aware that uh, World Federation Neurology is uh, basically running World Brain Day 2021 with the ambitious theme of stop multiple sclerosis. Uh, how excited are you to see uh, the, 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 the massive uh, uh, global organization such as World Federation Neurology is partnering with uh, Multiple Sclerosis Foundation, International World Health Organization, other broad uh, global neurology bodies to advocate uh, for better care for multiple sclerosis. Uh, how excited are you to see this uh, uh, happening? Um, just the one thing I would have want to tell, uh, at present in Bangalore, we are in a very bad situation because of the pandemic. We are having our second wave of COVID with the uh, multiple people being affected, young people being affected, many even vaccinated people. Of course, not having uh, serious uh, health issues, but they are also being affected. So I always think in the one year before itself as to what I'm going to do for the India MS Day, because it comes in Feb and the World MS Day comes in May end. So every time keep on planning as to what I'm going to do for the next MS Day. So two years back was the first time when I organized when we organized a rally, a cycle rally from the Rotarian Club of uh, Lions Club, which is based, a small club, which is there in uh, Bangalore. So with that, we try to uh, take many of the MS society positions of MS and try to advocate and bring our administration into uh, knowledge as to how much MS is important. That time it was enlightening to them to know that there was treatment and so much could be done because we had a one-to-one -one interaction with the patients of MS, as well as we had a panel discussion and uh, music therapy sessions for patients. So after that, every year I thought I'll do something, but last year again, because of the pandemic, I, we could not do anything. And uh, we just had some webinars and sessions where we tried to connect with patients. But last time, 
uh, connected with the disability commissioner with the patients so that we will be able to bring MS in the part of the disability scheme. So that we did last year. But this year, I you, your question was how excited I am. I really want the second wave to come down so that I can tell you back that, yes, I want to do this for this MS World Brain Day. But I have, we have been brought out in our own way, a brochure for patients, a patient education leaflets. That is what we have planned now only because of the pandemic. Otherwise, I think next year, something I'll be able to do. But this year, because of the pandemic, I'm not able to do much other than educate. Netra, this year, as you know, the we are doing this uh, interview on 27th of May, the recording. Uh, this uh, probably would be uplayed, updated, uh, uploaded to the website uh, a few days later, as it need to be curated and edited uh, uh, later on. Uh, as you correctly pointed out, uh, World MS Day is on 30th of May. The theme is connections, uh, which was the theme last year also. And I believe the theme is going to be connections uh, next year also. World Brain Day, we normally celebrate uh, 22nd July, which is the birthday of World Federation Neurology. But what we have done over the last couple of years is uh, we have uh, lengthened the World Brain Day activities for a longer period. So this time, basically from now on, we would have opportunity to do whatever the way that we can advocate for raising awareness of MS among patients, caregivers, administrators, policymakers, politicians, with this strong partnership between MSIF and WFN, what we have done is we have created a thing called World Brain Day Toolbox that has a whole variety of uh, uh, banners, posters, uh, social media posts uh, that can be converted to different languages and they can be used as if they belong to you, including the, the uh, intermittent uh, press briefs that uh, can be used by your institution. You can replace uh, the, the, the other things and add your things uh, uh, as, the, as if it is coming from you. And the idea is uh, try our very best uh, during these difficult circumstances uh, to continue to raise profile in this field. Uh, I agree, while the pandemic has uh, uh, stopped most of our routine activities, uh, it has also given us uh, some sort of a unique opportunity like uh, the the, the Professor Chandra Shekas and your other colleagues, uh, neuroinfections uh, group, uh, which has become a global phenomenon now uh, with uh, monthly webinars and educational events. Uh, uh, one thing that we learn out of this pandemic is the importance of uh, sharing knowledge and sharing ideas and fighting this global fight. As far as I can see, we have only one enemy. That enemy is SARS coronavirus too. And it's not a national problem as far as I can see, it's a global problem. And as, uh, as clinician scientists, uh, you and me and our colleagues, our job is to put our heads and brains together and find a solution, which is probably why we have uh, successful vaccines at this point of time. And many of our colleagues, including ourselves, we are working day in and day out to see how we can do this best uh, so that we can protect uh, human beings uh, and humanity worldwide. So the, 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 I would invite you to not to get disheartened about the pandemic and not being able to do routine things, but the, use the material that is available. And there will be a webinar on the day of the World Brain Day, which is 22nd of July. Then we are hoping to rerun the live webinar and live Q&A session during the World Congress of Neurology, which will be virtual in early October. Then we will have uh, ECTRIMS a uh, few weeks down the track, uh, which will also be virtual. And we plan to run the webinar and live Q&A session at that time also. So the World Brain Day activities, uh, uh, which, which, which has started now, we would concentrate uh, more to support our colleagues uh, with World MS Day on 30th of uh, uh, May. Uh, and then the, we continue our activities uh, in collaboration with all the colleagues all over the world to advocate for better care for MS uh, on five key themes, uh, which are all available through uh, World Brain Day Toolbox. Uh, so I encourage you to use them and 
do whatever you can and the other invitation is uh, patient stories uh, uh, the wfn is very keen to have video clips coming from patients whatever the story that they can tell in any language that they wish to talk uh, uh, the we are going to have two web pages one in english one non english uh, and uh, the they can basically share their story on their smartphone or any smart device uh, over 60 seconds or 90 seconds uh, whatever the story that they want us to hear Uh, so encourage your patients and caregivers to submit their videos also and uh, the the i will the i will add the uh, the email address uh, for that at the end of this uh, video which we, which is uh, wbd2021 at uh, wfneurology.org so that's one way of uh, getting involved and any other activity uh, we would most welcome uh, any advocacy that you could do uh, given the difficult circumstances that we all live at this point of time uh, what i would want to tell is uh, to say that um, as part of the ms day of course we are bringing out the brochures we are bringing out some patient booklets and information you were talking about the toolkit which you'll be able to help us but already we have brought about all this which you are planning to launch on uh, that day the next week actually planning to have a webinar and show but uh, please webinar somehow most of our patients when whenever we have try to organize a webinar there are a very select few of ms patients who are tech savvy who are ready to come on to the media and show themselves to the other people especially mainly because of the stigma and many of them because they are younger age group they wouldn't want somebody else to know that they have this problem this health issue so like last year when we had the disability uh, talk along with the disability commissioner so that we bring about the ms into the disability act among the patients who were there almost uh, the nimans ms registry is more than 300 patients so we had actually organized this for throughout india and my patients only two of them came whereas uh, the throughout india it was around 50 patients so you can just imagine what i want to say is yes webinars and brochures pamphlets is everything is going to be helpful during this pandemic because that's the only way we are able to communicate maintaining a social distance but the bc that is a pre corona era which was there where we could communicate with our patients tell them that we are going to be there for them i think that is going to take a lot of time that is what i wanted to tell ki that day i hope comes faster so that we'll be able to be there for them now yes of course we are going to be there for many of them especially in india where very few people are technologically safe savvy persons for them we are going to have some educational themes but very thankful for giving us opportunity to share from your website from wfn thanks a lot but what i was trying to say is that human touch that human uh, humanness for me to feel ki yes and we have made a difference because as i told that uh, two years back when we had the music therapy even a person who was on the wheelchair was trying to uh, go into the sway into the music and try to dance and at the end of the program many of them told to me that they never felt so much alive by the music so much so this type of things is missing and i think uh, just waiting for the pandemic to over but of course yes with the technology we we'll definitely try to have whatever is required no i i, I totally agree nothing like uh, face to face and being live uh, given the restrictions uh, the let's try what we can do and i totally agree and uh, no two countries are the same no two regions are the same uh, different patients uh, have different way of doing things uh, nothing like seeing a physician face to face or human touch uh, for that matter which is uh, impossible these days uh, with uh, all these physical distancing and other things uh, but let's uh, let's explore what is possible and uh, what other avenues are there and many people nowadays use smartphones and people are uh, getting in touch with each other as we talk uh, offline my parents live in rural sri lanka and they are not tech savvy but i have bought them a, a smartphone and uh, we whatsapp uh, with each others and we they could see my video clip uh, they could see 
my children and my children could see them it's not like uh, seeing them face to face it's not like uh, sleeping with them in their own house uh, where i was born and grew up uh, but it is uh, probably the next best uh, the, the 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 given that uh, th- there's no yeah. way that uh, we can do things uh, physically finally all netra this, all this negative is the one thing what is required yes so uh, much negativity is there we need to be positive no oh, absolutely and uh, the, that is how humans have overcome uh, past struggles when we look through the history throughout our evolution certainly in the asia oceania region which has such a rich history for well over 5000 years uh, uh, finally netra the, the any final take home messages for potential medical students uh, or young neurology trainees or young neurologists uh, who might end up uh, watching this video what is your message to them uh i would just want to tell that uh... i think many of you would have heard this but uh, follow your passion many times 12 14 hours we are working in the hospital but we don't realize that because we are following our passion we don't feel it's a burden we don't feel that it is affecting our health because when we do not enjoy what we are doing it starts causing a health breakdown mental breakdown i am from a neuropsychiatry hospital so the health both the mental and the physical health is very very important and to when we are going to be there for 30 40 years in the profession just follow your passion just follow what your heart says and be there be um, that human touch has to be maintained at all level whether you are a doctor whether you are a nurse or whether you are doing even any other job also then just with passion everything it's going to be good and one thing in neurology what i would want to tell people who would want to take up neurology this is one of the uh, i think one of the nicest era every year there is so much of research happening especially in almost everything in neurology especially neuroimmunology just two years back what i would have had uh, thoughts on like for just for example to give mog was considered as part of nmo spectrum disorder but now we know it is not nmo was considered as part of asiatic type of ms now we know it's not so eventually the things are evolving treatments are becoming more better and this is a type of time when we'll be able to afford treatment me previously neurological disorders were called thought of having many of the degenerative problem but we know now many of them have treatment and many of them can be made better especially if they are caught in the early stages of illnesses so only two things just follow your passion and have a proper physical and mental health both thank you thank you very much netra all the very best and stay safe and well and uh, best wishes uh, from our team at world federation neurology and australia where i live uh, to stay well and safe uh, thank you very much for your time out of busy schedule to talk about world Bra- world brain day and we look forward to hear more good things from nim hands and from your team thank you wish you the same take care bye